Congratulations on your wonderful uh, reading tonight, uh, Rigoberto. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Diario San Antonio. Is this your first time in San Antonio? No, it's not. It's my third. I've actually come down here uh, to do some functions with Nalek. The National Association of Latin Arts and Cultures. Yes. So it's been. Otherwise, it's. I've never been here during this time of the season, so it's very nice to be here when it's not so hot. <laughs> Uh, are you uh, currently touring with a book, or is there something new that there you is. have on the horizon? There is. I have a, I had a book of stories come out in the fall called Men Without Bliss. came out in the U.S. Press, and I have a book coming out in April, the young adult novel that I talked about called The Manifesto Club. Who are you reading right now that you recommend? I just finished reading uh, Roberto Bolaño's 2666, which was took me a while. It's a very difficult book to get through because of the subject matter, but it's well worth the read. And um, I'm currently reading a book of poetry by a young poet uh, whose name is John Olivares Espinosa, and it's called The Date Fruit Elegies. And uh, it's, it's a wonderful book that takes place in Southern California about uh, growing up in, in relative poverty and try to uh, transcend that and, and find a space in, in higher education. So it's a wonderful book of poetry. It was published by Bilingual Press just recently. Are you um, a native of Texas or California? No, or I'm maybe a I'm a native of, of California, though I didn't grow up there. I grew up in Michoacan. Uh, I, again, people think that I'm a, a Texan because I work for the El Paso Times a newspaper, but no, I, I, I'm not, well, I love El Paso, I love El Paso, I love El Paso writers, there's so many of them, uh, but I'm not from, from Texas now. I consider now myself a New Yorker, I lived in New York for 10 years, so I'm, I think I'm a New Yorker. How do you find uh, jet uh, jetting from all these different places, different kind of audiences, do you uh, adapt any of your works with a specific um, audience? No, no, not really. I mean, I'm always just, it's whatever, whatever the work takes me, that's where I, I just go along for the ride. I don't, uh, I do know that I'm writing about specific communities. Yeah. I, I'm writing about the Chicama community. I do write about the, the queer community. I do write about the communities that dealt with poverty, with oppression. Uh, so that's, but uh, I'm not sure they're my audience, but that's really my inspiration. Uh, do you feel that, uh, and this is more of a, a, a position kind of a question. Uh, I've always been a, a champion or an advocate for young adult books being considered by the National Book Critics Circle. And it seems like every time that I bring it up, I don't get any response to it. How do you feel about that? I think, you know, the National Book Award already recognizes, right? The National Book Award uh, already recognizing adults. I don't, I, you know what, I, I, I don't know why. Um, and, and I think that it can change because there has been changes in the NBC before. There was, uh, I think, autobiography and biography were finally split, yeah. right? So I think there is room for a change. I don't, I don't remember that being a conversation with the National Book Creek Circle the couple of years that I've been in it. I've only been there two years, so I haven't heard anything uh, about it, but... Um, but perhaps it, it needs to be revisited. I think absolutely there's such wonderful young adult literature being written, so why not give it the kind of recognition and attention that we give all these other categories? I agree with you, absolutely. Uh, do you think that, that uh, the literature that you see today in the schools reflects the population? I would, you know, I haven't been in school for a while, but I do know that my own experience was very bleak. I mean, I read very good books, but most of them were by white authors. I didn't, wasn't exposed to any kind of ethnic literature at all until I got to college. Uh, the only kind of ethnicity that I ever got in, in, in high school was through Greek mythology, Greek, you know, and that kind of literature, but not Greek plays, you know, but not any anything else outside of the white experience. So I, I think it's about time that something needs to be addressed, that something changed. If it hasn't, I'm not sure. I know there's been books like Wasana Cisneros' Red House on Mango Street has been used in high schools a lot, and also... Um, Victor Hernandez, the parent of the oven. But, you know, there could be more, more than just a, a, few, a few titles. In there. 
Absolutely, I agree with you. And it seems that now that more school boards have a majority Latino, especially here in Texas, that you don't see that reflected in the curriculum that is still run by the uh, majority or, or the majority rulers, I and should I think say. It's a little yeah. shameful. Yeah. It's a little shameful. But you know, this, I would, I would actually take it a step further and say, take this also in, in, in colleges where you have, um, you know, uh, there's always a fight in, in many campuses in terms of where to place your literatures. And you have co- colleges that are so widely represented by ethnic, you know, a population, but the <laughs> staff, the faculty are not. I mean, those are the kind of things that need yeah. to be addressed as well. Yeah. And I think that those changes will trickle down. But they have to start at the top, really. One last question. Uh, films. What films are you championing? I, I, I read in the paper that uh-huh. you didn't like Milk, and of course I hated it as well. <laughs> Let me know. But uh, for different, like, perhaps different reasons. Yeah, yeah, it's not that I didn't like Milk. Uh, the question that I was asked was about what I thought about the speech and whether the speech was going to change anything. And I thought, and my response was that the speech was very self-serving because it's really about it's really bringing attention to the one person. And I thought, you know, an individual voice is the beginning but it's not the solution so we can't say that just because milk is receiving this kind of recognition that everything's going to change even now as we speak we know that there's this in California right Proposition 8, eight and uh-huh. all the BS and also the, the marriages that were that were um, created consummated them, yes are, yeah. are now being challenged so whether or not milk is going to make a difference in that who knows uh, who knows I think that um, I, I don't have time to, to watch films unfortunately um, but uh, any little gems out there that you recommend? Slumdog Millionaire. <laughs> okay. Well, of course, you know, absolutely. One of my favorite films, and, and I champion it everywhere I go, is uh, uh, La Virgen de los Sicarios, Our Lady uh, of the Assassins. Yes, yes. Which was based on a novel. Right? Yes, uh, Fernando. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember his last name right, right now. Right. Yeah. But it was a beautiful film, a very daring, very daring film. Right, uh, and it's a beautiful. And it reminds me also of a Pedro Le Medel's novel, My Tender Matador, which uh-huh. I think is a, I would see it as a companion to that to that, a Lady of the Assassins, Nuestra Señora de los Sicarios. Thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoy your stay in San Antonio. Thank you very much.